We're the Arcades, and we'd like to talk about polyfragmentation. Uh, we are a polyfragmented system. You will see as we go through the presentation that that doesn't exactly mean that we have a high alter count anymore, but we do still experience polyfragmentation. By extension, we're going to talk about fusion. So if that's something that's a little difficult for you to wade into, um, please feel free to, to skip this one. So let's talk caveats. <clears throat> we are a traumagenic system. I discovered the rest of my headmates in when I was 36. And at the age of 38, I realized that we had a very large group of alters hiding around inside. We call them the bustle. We experience amnesia between our headmates. Uh, if we don't actually talk to each other, then we will not remember what was said between people. And finally, <clears throat> for, our, for our needs, we prioritize functionality over internal authenticity. And what that means is I am less concerned, and we as a system are less concerned, about how, uh, how we look internally and the way that we count ourselves internally and the way that we work with each other. Our primary function is to be functional, which means maintaining our job, paying all of our bills, continuing to be a functioning member of society, that kind of stuff. With those caveats out of the way, let's talk about what polyfragmentation actually is. So you'll see a lot of loose definitions around about polyfragmentation. Some might say more than 100 alters. Some might say that if there is a subsystem that acts as a, as a group, that is a sign of polyfragmentation. Uh, I choose to go with simply a profound sense of dissociation. So for me, the difference between being polyfragmented and being um, more of a a smaller sized system was really about the the dissociation. Our highest altar count was 400 and that's about the time that we met the bustle which is a group of children in inside the system who shared a lot of traumatic history. Through a lot of work, a lot of journaling, and a lot of homework around organizing my thoughts and organizing the system itself, we are now down to seven. It took a lot of hard work and it took a lot of time. Does this mean that we have seven and that's it forever? Absolutely not. In fact, I would even say that members of the bustle are still here. They're just no longer counting themselves as singular alters. Some of the challenges of polyfragmentation, we lose a lot of time. I have, I know personally myself, I have lost evenings, days, even weeks to uh, to traumatic switches and to dissociation. It's difficult often to know who's up when when because sometimes the alters that come up don't realize that we're, you know, in 2023. Sometimes the people who come up, they don't know that the other, other system members exist. So sometimes it's very difficult for us to know who is influencing our behavior when. Decision making gets really painful because you have so many people who are looking to, looking to have their feedback heard. And one of the things that I find very useful here, and we'll discuss later, is the power of metaphor. And finally, if you're like us and you have amnesia, adding polyfragmentation to the mix is just a big ol' yikes. It is hard. It is so, so hard to overcome amnesia barriers when you're polyfragmented. So let's say this one's you, it me. What do I do now? Well, take a breath and then like, take another one because everything's made up. The numbers and the alters don't matter. It's always the same thing. It's just dissociated parts in your head. And nothing in your system work is permanent. If you started out with three alters and suddenly you have 300, or even if you thought you had 300 and you end up having three, nothing is permanent. These things ebb and flow with time. And so the point is not to know the truth so much as it is to know a way that you can all get along. System mapping is gonna be your best friend when you're polyfragmented. Mind mapping software does a lot of good work here. Uh, for example, I used Simple Mind and was able to, because you end up with subsystems within subsystems, being able to group your alters and say like, these 10 alters have this traumatic memory, or 
these five altars remember this location. Being able to see and, and organize is going to be super important for chasing down what's real, what you need to process, and making sh and it will also help you make sure that everyone gets what they need because these grouped altars often want very similar things. Simply Plural is an app for iOS and Android. It keeps timestamped history of who's out and it allows you to group altars into uh, groups. Very, very nice and effective. It may seem like a small thing, but using Simply Plural and, and a service like Picrew to create a face for all each altar that comes up and out can be really empowering for system members who might be further back in the back. We want to keep versions of this too, which sounds very strange, but in a polyfragmented system, your structure changes pretty often. <clears throat> so you might think that you have one altar, but it turns out that one altar is actually 10 altars in a trench coat. So keeping versions of, of where you are at each point in the process will help you track your progress as a polyfragmented system. And finally, make sure that everybody inside knows how to reach the main fronters. Maybe this is a chat room. Maybe this is a journal. I know that for us, we use Simply Plural uh, for tracking who's up, and we use Discord to chat among each other. Whatever it is, make sure that everybody inside knows how to contact. This will sound really strange, but let go of your categorization. You have autonomous parts. You have a lot of them if you're polyfragmented. That's great. But at the end of the day, you all have to work together. So you could spend days trying to determine who fulfills what role in your large system, or you could choose instead to get to know the headmates as they come up. It's far less about how would another system put it and far more about how do we work inside. You all share a big electric meatball that happens to be a quantum computer. How amazing is that? Nobody else in this world is going to be more qualified to help you understand how that meatball works and how to share it than yourselves, your own system. Always look inside. Ask inside. Trust inside. Especially for polyfragmented systems, metaphor can be a powerful tool. So this image is from Inception. If you haven't seen it, it's a movie about dreaming. I won't go too far into it, but the top that's pictured here is used to ground the protagonist in reality. It was really important to find a metaphor that worked for us, that made us feel like the inside made sense, and that it was structured in a way that everyone could have their say, but it wasn't simply, well, anarchy. We tried that at first. Bad idea, total failure. Turns out you need some structure when you're a system. Who knew? We tried families, we tried neighborhoods, we tried working groups, we tried for a while acting like we were our own office, and that was immediately rejected by the littles. But we landed on, and this will sound strange, but we landed on legislative chambers. It was important to have order, because we do have a job uh, where our ability to keep things in order is really important, but also allowed everybody in the system to express themselves individually if they wished. We have seven legislative chambers in sort of our headspace, and everyone is free within inside the system to join one of those caucuses, one of those legislative caucuses, and each one of them report up to an altar, like one of our primary fronters. Each of the main fronters is responsible for the constituents in their legislative chamber, which sounds like a whole bunch of effort, but honestly, once you set up the metaphor and once you kind of get an idea in your head that this is how it's set up, your brain sort of fills in the blanks, at least in our experience. So what's really interesting here is that our headmates latched onto the concept. They had the choice, given, give, giving them the choice to be involved in our daily life or to just be an insider was a huge change. So some folks inside just use passive influence. Some folks inside want to come out for exactly 10 minutes just to do one thing. Like there's only so much life that you can dissociate away. And as your poly, as your polyfragmentation sort of resolves itself, you come to find out that a lot of the pieces and parts inside have such small bits to play that many of them just want to tell their story and go away. Everything's your own adventure when you're polyfragmented. Leave the past behind. Kill it if you have to. I know I'm going to quote Kylo Ren here, but 
I know it's really tempting to pathologize and categorize, like this one is a trauma holder, this one is a, a, a little, this one's a system protector, this one's a social protector. In polyfragmented systems, oftentimes the parts that come up at first don't have enough personality, don't have enough going for them to be a coherent being. So instead of trying to figure out what other systems would describe this as or what the medical community or the therapeutic community might describe it as, this is your own brain. Make your own rules. We, are, we allow ourselves to trust the people who come to the front. They come up, we ask if they want to stay, if they want to be part of the fronting group or if they just want to share a story. Most times they say they want to share a story, they share it, they go away and they feel happier and we feel a bit lighter. Now, is that something that's going to help everybody? No. Is it something that's going to help you? Possibly. But again, I don't care if it does it for everybody. We're all in these giant electric meatballs. Remember that quantum computer? Uh, the way that yours works is going to be different than every other meatball in existence. As you're working through this with your system, pay attention to and take guidance from the documentation and, and resources that are available, but don't treat it as a gospel. Leave it behind if it's not serving you. So this question of independence or emancipation came up pretty often in our system discovery. I understand that we want to be kind and polite to all of our parts, and we want to give everybody time, and we want to be loving and helpful for our parts, but sometimes that's not what's called for. Sometimes the be-all, end-all of system work isn't everyone gets to have time in front. Sometimes it could be a case of time sharing. Who wants to spend time with whom? If I'm playing a video game, can I invite everybody else in the system to watch? Uh, grouping, gr grouping alters into like-minded groups. So say, for example, we have littles who like to play with <clears throat> Lego blocks versus adults who really enjoy Civilization VI. Let's just pull one out of the hat. Like Those grouped alters can grow closer and talk to each other and share time in that time. And what that often does is it leads to fusion. When we started our, our discovery of the bustle, we had a very difficult time because obviously, how am I gonna share a body with 400 people? But that rule had been given to me by the community, which makes a lot of sense if you're a smaller system. But as a polyfragmented system, it was really, it caused a lot of issues. We started losing time, we started feeling stress, we started having breakdowns. It really took one of our littles coming to us and saying, we just want to tell our story and then go away and we don't need time out front. That we started to relax and sort of let the polyfragmentation work itself out. You want to be curious and compassionate about your parts. So for those of you who don't know, this is the butter robot from Rick and Morty. Without going into a lot of detail, Rick is a jerk and a scientist. He decides to create, instead of asking for someone to pass the butter, he creates a robot whose sole purpose is to bring him butter. And that robot is also self-aware. So it's like, why am I still here? This, this will sound strange, but Polyfragmented systems often have butter robots. They are, they exist, they have a very limited purpose. They're not really fully formed individuals. Like I know for us, we had, we've had altars so small that they remember like one physical motion or altars, fragmented altars that took a, took a long time to come together because all of the parts had been separated into smaller altars that now we've now that we've had a chance to share and learn we realize are actually different ages of altars that we already know again if a altar comes up and they're a butter robot they have a limited and small purpose in your polyfragmented system listen to them love them ask them what they want i was so busy trying to fit my altars into my life that i didn't ask what they wanted and honestly, what turned out to be the case is that if you've spent your entire life as an altar doing nothing but holding on to a horrible traumatic memory, 
there's a world in which you just don't want to exist anymore, or you want to share and become part of something bigger and better. Of course, if you're probably fragmented and traumagenic, like we are, there will be bad things. You will find things that will make your skin crawl. You will discover experiences that you can't shake. And over everything else, please remember, the experience you had was bad. But the altar who had it, they're a victim too. They're not bad because of the experience they had. They're sharing with you a horrific experience. And they want comfort, they want calm, and they want to know that they're being heard. Provide those things for them. Finally, <clears throat> going back to fusion. Once we started actually listening to the altars and enforcing a metaphor inside that let everyone have a voice and we started letting altars go, we started experiencing a lot of fusions. Oftentimes 10 or 12 altars at once would fuse into a single altar. We like to think of it as if each altar was a lens, the way that we began was with all of all seven lenses thrown on the ground and shattered into hundreds of pieces. And as we met each altar, we were able to piece the lenses back together to find the actual altars of the system. Now, is that a metaphor that'll work for everybody? Probably not. However, I think it's a pretty good start. Some systems think that fusion is a scary experience. It is the, the death of an altar, but I'm here to tell you it's not. It is a feeling of, I don't have to carry this dissociated weight anymore. And I'm close enough to the people around me in my system that I don't have to be separate anymore. So again, as these altars come up and they share their experiences, you're going to feel, you're going to feel like you need to keep a hold of all of the, the people in your system. And that's not true. It is good to respect and give people the option inside of being a part of the system, but if they don't want to be there and they want to fuse and be part of somebody else and everyone's cool with it on the inside, let it happen. It's so much easier when you let these things happen and follow sort of where your brain wants to go when it's healing. The parts of the past altars are still there. Like we had a 13 year old coder named Melody who was very cute and very fun but she had she was 13 so she had a lot of a lot of issues and she ended up fusing with an adult and now we have Misty who is our coder really really uh, good video game player and now can even work like she's in the work rotation so every time that these fusions happen at least in our experience we gained functionality and we gained a deeper appreciation and understanding for our system as a whole. So let's talk findings. We came up with three questions through the course of our polyfragmentation journey and each one is an improvement over the last one. So we started with the hard question, who is inside? It's a good question, but it's also very confusing. Maybe they can't hear you. Maybe they're not ready to speak yet. Maybe they take umbarge, and maybe they take offense that you're trying to reach them after they promised that they'd keep something hidden from you. Who wants time is a slightly better question. Hey, I'm bored tonight. I don't really have anything that's going on. Does anybody have anything they want to do? And that has made us feel so much more productive and so much more in tune as a system. Just asking the question, who wants to be here? Then finally, where we landed that, that really started getting the polyfragmentation to go down and the, the dissociation to go down was who wants time and who's okay sharing time? We have altars that don't want to front. And I'm sure that many people with polyfragmented systems have that same thing going on. But explicitly asking the question, hey, I'm going to play a game. Hey, I'm going to go play piano. I'm going to take a walk. I'm going to go out to dinner. Does anybody want to come with me? Asking that out in, in, in the open in a way that invites people to share but not take time 
is such a great question. You end up having much closer conversations with everybody who shows up. And as you do this, you'll probably create some fusions, especially if there's, you know, just as an example, we had a kid who wanted to play Galaga. Like, that's all that he wanted to do. He loved Galaga. And so we were at an arcade, I saw one, and I was like, hey, anybody want to play an arcade game? And the kid came out and played one game of Galaga and went away. Like, that, that's okay. He's now a part of POTS. It's really cool to be able to do that and to give those parts the, the help that they need. So, as a recap, polyfragmentation is a difficult thing to deal with, but it's all in the mind. Everything is all up here. Your curiosity and your metaphor are going to be your most powerful tools, ways to group up and better understand where all the altars sit, why they sit there, but also not becoming dogmatic about it and allowing yourself to get completely lost in the system map. It's going to change. It's going to shift. Very few people have the ability to hold, you know, 100 plus different narratives in their head. And you as a polyfragmented system are no different. So be curious, allow the metaphor that works for you to work. But more than anything, ask your headmates what they want and respect their wishes. It's all about respect and kindness at the end of the day, just like it always is. It's always about what do you want? How can I help you feel better? How can I help you feel safe? And whatever they ask for, try to get it if you can. You know, yeah, it might mean that you're going to spend a day, just as an example, let's say you have a, a, a very, very young altar. That might mean you spend your day with a blanket a stuffy and a pacifier watching Bluey. And if you allow yourself to do that, that kid will feel safe, that kid will feel supported, and that kid might, might, might grow up, might fuse, might go dormant. Just, again, you have to ask for what they want, and if you can do it without causing harm to yourself, do it. Respect their wishes. That's how you get through the polyfragmentation. And with that, I want to thank everybody for coming to this talk. For those of you in the audience, we're going to go to a question and answer. But for those of you seeing this on YouTube, again, thank you very much. I hope this was super helpful for some of you who have lots of alters and lots of fragmentation in your system. And as always, and today, as every day, is a great day to be a system.